Hey guys, most homes with full basements have small rectangular style windows. They're foundation windows and they're typically at ground level. If your house is older, chances are that these windows were wood and may need replacing. This video is going to uh, focus on replacing a wood basement window in masonry. In this situation, it's brick. We will be using uh, replacement window units without nailing fence because we're going to embed it into the brick with mortar. I want to note though, if you have a wood frame built around your window, maybe you've got bigger windows or some framing, you need to order a window with nailing fence. Replacing a basement window is pretty straightforward. Um, it can save, it's a good thing to do. It's gonna save you heating and cooling costs and maybe even prevent frozen pipes because the windows aren't leaking anymore or broken. Um, there are two types of older basement windows, wood and steel, commonly found in a masonry foundation. Uh, the wood windows, they typically have a, a wood frame or a jam around them on all four sides and they're secured in the concrete or brick. And steel windows have what's called a steel buck and it's just a metal frame and it's usually embedded in the, in the masonry. Um, See that in uh, concrete foundations a lot and, and uh, concrete block. So when measuring for a new window, consider whether you're removing the wood window or, or the metal frame or it's staying in place. But for wood windows, I think it's best just get rid of it all. Take all the wood out, the jam, everything. Um, and this means for replacement, you'll need to measure the width and the height of the actual window frame not the sash. So you want to measure the whole unit if you can see it and, and that's the window that you're going to, um, that's the size you want to order. For best results you should measure from the inside and you know measuring the window frame on the outside is too complicated especially with the sill and once you start measuring um, order your replacement window to either fit that measurement or better yet make it a little bit smaller maybe a half inch smaller on the width and height just to give you some room to get it in because sometimes you have to fight these um, the difference in space can be filled later you can do it with uh, spray foam uh, mortar if there's a wood frame you can do trim around it on metal window frames you need to determine what parts of the metal buck can be removed and what can't sometimes they're embedded and they're tough to get out because um, of poured concrete foundations so unless it's severely rusted, sometimes it's better to just leave it in place and kind of work around it. Um, <clears throat> you can use a, a cold chisel reciprocating saw with a metal blade, pry bar, but it's an argu arduous task to get it out. Um, so sometimes it's better to just take the frame, what you can take out, leave the metal buck in place. If you do leave, the res um, leave that metal piece in place, you need to order a smaller window, obviously, right? So you get a measure. In, in that case, you're gonna measure from metal to metal um, and that's going to be your new window width. Uh, here's a tip though, measure the width and the height in three places, top, middle, and bottom, and, and the other way, and use your smallest dimension. Order the window slightly smaller um, because you're just not going to want to fight this stuff. Sometimes we have to modify things, um, it can be tough. So removing the old sash, use a reciprocating saw and pry bars, and that, that's just going to help with the removal. Once the window is removed, you want to clean up and inspect the rough opening in the concrete or brick opening. Make any necessary masonry repairs as needed to the opening. That's the time to do it. And be prepared to make modifications to the rough opening of the new window too. You might need to take off a little bit or add something. Uh, sometimes there's a ridge of concrete that was under the wood or metal frames. And if that ridge is in your way, use a grinder or a hammer uh, and cold chisel to chip away the mortar. Uh, either on the bottom or sides, wherever that ridge is as necessary. Other times, modifying the window slightly may wor work in getting a perfect fit. And I had to do that with a multi-tool, uh, just cut off and modify the PVC around the f uh, one side of the window to just gain an extra eighth of an inch or something. Um, and sometimes, guys, that's a lot easier to do than tearing out masonry. Uh, let's talk about it actually installing the window. So you want to remove the sash, the screen, um, from the new window so you can access the screw holes, right? You're gonna center your window into the opening and what I do is I hold it up tight to the, um, the wood house uh, mud sill, the foundation sill. I'm gonna pre-drill some holes and I'm gonna secure that window up into that mud sill with galvanized or stainless steel screws. Um, if, a, if attaching to masonry, you're gonna wanna use a hammer drill and secure it, uh, secure the window in place by installing double-headed, uh, double-threaded concrete screws along the sides or top of the window, whichever applicable. Once the window is centered, um, you should have a, si a slight gap on the sides and bottom if you, if you measured right. Um, and maybe you, you, know, you might wanna flush that window, keep it flush with the foundation. You might wanna even just keep it in a little bit. 
Depending on the size of the gap you have, fill any large gaps between the window and the masonry foundation with any one of the following. So if it's a really large gap, maybe you use mortar, brick or stone, whatever, depends on what your foundation material is, and close in that space. Close it in until you have a half of an inch gap all the way around, or even a quarter inch would work. Use expanding spray foam under and in the side gaps um, and all around the window actually, seal the whole thing in, but this is gonna seal off air leaks. And basically what I do is I, I take some uh, pipe insulation, I custom cut it or I use foam backer rod and I fill the gap on one side and then I just foam to that. Uh, the, the backer rod keeps the spray foam from falling out the other side. You can even use blue tape on one side to help keep the foam from coming out. And when I'm foaming, I try to keep the foam back about an inch or two to allow room to add mortar later on the outside. And that's gonna keep it waterproof and secure it all and lock it in place. Um, once that's done, fit the sash and check it for fit, make sure it fits right. Then go on the outside and pack mortar into those gaps on the outside of the window. Blending to the foundation or if you had set it back, just filling in that gap. Smooth the mortar with a trowel, clean off the PVC with, with a rag, and then you want to make sure you slope any bottom edges away to shed water if you have a sill or a, um, a foundation um, sill or just flush it to the foundation like I do. Some windows have uh, what's called weep holes. Try not to block those up with mortar. I did on my first window. On my second window, I used blue tape to cover them up. Worked great. Uh, when that's done, just install the screens. Check the seams uh, on the interior. You might want to reapply spray foam or caulk that inside seam. If it's a big gap, maybe mortar. Apply mortar. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Consider subscribing. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time at Concord Carpenter.